Can you read to me the nameplate? Judge Ebony K. Williams. So the only thing that matters in this particular courtroom is how I see it. I am from North Carolina by way of Louisiana with some West Coast cool and a New York edge. Do we have a problem, ma'am? No, I don't, Your Honor. Equal justice is all about the most important values of our country, freedom, integrity, and those are the things that I'm striving for. Ma'am, you run your household. This man gets to run his. I decided to become an attorney and pursue the law. I wanted to be a voice for the voiceless. This court cannot not hold this woman accountable. People from all sectors of life, black, white, purple, gay, straight, queer, and that's what Equal Justice with Judge Ebony K. Williams is all about. Bradford Kingston claims his former employer withheld his pay after she falsely accused him of theft. Leanne Davis says video footage proved Mr. Kingston took the valuable items. Ms. Davis is countersuing for $3,854. I see you have Bradford Kingston here as yes. my plaintiff, and you are suing for $3,000, and the defendant is Leanne Davis. Ms. Davis, you have a countersuit for $3,854. Yes. Mr. Kingston, yes. Uh, why are we in court today? I am here to collect my $3,000. My last two weeks of employment at the daycare, mm -hmm. she did not pay me, and I'm here to collect that. Okay, so this woman owns a daycare facility that you worked for? Correct. Okay, and how long did you work there, sir? I was there approximately two months. Okay, so you did get paid up until the last two weeks? Correct. And then she withheld those, those funds? Yes. Okay, why would she do a thing like that, sir? Um, because she has insinuated that I have stolen a couple of items off the premises at the daycare. Mm. What is she saying that you stole, sir? A drivable toy car and a watch. Okay, interesting. Um, so give me a little bit about your background, Mr. Kingston. You work with children your entire I, career? Or? Yes, I have a degree in childhood development and I love teaching. So how was it in the beginning, sir? You know what, we had a pretty good relationship, but it took a turn very quickly. Mm. I noticed that she wasn't quite fond of males. I'm the only male teacher there. Mm. Very first thing that I heard out of her mouth, mm -hmm. it's very unusual for a man to work with kids. Mm. What did you think she was implying by that, sir? You know what? My mind went in a lot of different directions and it put me in an uncomfortable situation. Mm. And did she hire you? She did. Okay, so, okay. That's, that's crazy though, right? And, and I will get to hear your side in a minute, Ms. Davis, mm -hmm. but uh, under you know, the premise of what you're laying out for us, it would be very inconsistent for somebody to hire who someone who clearly presents as a man to work with children at her daycare facility and then condemn that very hire for being a man. Correct. Okay. So this kind of continues. You're uncomfortable. You find it to be hostile. Yes. And at some point you turn in your notice? I did. Okay. Gave her my resignation mm -hmm. basically saying the straw that broke the camel's back Again, hey, I know you stole these items. I know that it was you. You were the only one around. Mm -hmm. Without having clear proof, mm -hmm. there's no way that I'm gonna work under those conditions. Here's my resignation. I'm out of here. Okay, and how did she take that? Not well. Not well. Okay, and is that why she withheld those last two weeks of, of funds for you? Amongst other things, yes. Okay. All right, Ms. Davis, he lays out a, a, a searing case against you. Uh, what do you have to say for yourself, ma'am? As far as I'm concerned, he was the only one at the time of the crime in the place of the crime. Mm. So it, you're saying it was a, a, a crime of opportunity and he's the only one that had the opportunity. And the, Yes, and the only reason is because we have some footage. Mm. So, uh, why don't you go ahead and present your evidence to my bailiff, ma'am? Um, any evidence that you have? Oh, I have. So that I can evaluate. Can you take your entire folder, please? Oh, certainly. Yes, please. Okay, thank, thank you, you ma'am. And you're saying that he, Mr. Uh, Kingston here, owes you this because you're just convinced that he must have been the one to have stole both these items? I can't imagine who else. There's no evidence of anybody else being in the vicinity at the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm, I'm looking right at Mr. Kingston's resignation. Ms. Davis, I'm writing to formally announce my immediate, yes. hence no uh, other notice, resignation, uh, d effective immediately. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, so this is actually pretty standard. This is just a standard letter of resignation. Yes. So you didn't really get into your gripes. I did not, Your Honor. Okay. Because and why is that? There's no talking to the devil. 
Ooh. No talking to the devil. Miss, Miss Davis, are you the devil? Uh, I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. We got along fine until this happened. Mm. Is it true, as he tells the court, though, Miss Davis, that you felt that he was uh, particularly unqualified to be a good teacher and work with small children because he's a man? Is that true? Is there some truth to that? I may have said something to the girls, but uh, at this point, When you I, say the girls, you mean the other teachers? The other ladies, mm -hmm. correct. They're all ladies, mm -hmm. <laughs> the rest of the So teachers. why'd you hire him if you feel a way towards male teachers? Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I have no problem if they're qualified. Coming up on Equal Justice. Okay, well, let's get the investigation going a little further. We, we have asked that um, Mr. Kingston here submit to a polygraph to the court. Oh. And while it's not controlling, it can be compelling. And later. You know, I'm a mother. I've birthed two children. Uh, things aren't quite where they used to be. So I got a tummy tuck, I got my breast done, and I'm very proud of it. Yeah. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6870. This is Equal Justice. Equal Justice is back with the case of Bradford Kingston, who brought Leanne Davis to court over docked wages. And why are you implying in my courtroom that this man is a not qualified? Only because he was seen on that footage and it's become a mystery ever since. Okay. Let's look at this footage. Um, I do know that the defense has uh, submitted this uh, footage, video evidence. Yeah, there he is. I know that ain't it. Miss D Ms. Davis, what did you want me to make of this? <laughs> that he was in the play. That he was at work? At, that he was at work. That's right where it was, <laughs> that he was in that camp. So that, that he was in a classroom. Yeah, where the where car worked. took off and okay. the watch took off. That's footage of that. Miss, Mr. Kingston, yes. When you're looking for a problem, mm. you're going to find it. In regards to that footage, mm -hmm. I was actually decorating the classroom, putting up new things for the kids. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, here's the thing, Ms. Davis, that footage at, at, at its best is limited. All I can really tell from that is that it was Mr. Kingston, but all I can tell is that he's on your premises, which he should be because he works there. He, Your Honor, he had no explanation of why he was there at that particular moment when those two items disappeared. Okay. Uh, According to Miss Davis, Mr. Kingston, you, you sitting on a drivable toy Range Rover somewhere at your garage, is that true? That's Listen. Right. You balling in the streets with the kids? In the streets. Yeah. I drove it all the way home. Yeah. <laughs> 405, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Sheesh. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, let's get the investigation going a little further. We, we have asked that um, Mr. Kingston here submit to a polygraph to the court. Okay. And while it's not controlling, it can be compelling. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go ahead and see the results of this, Mr. Kingston. And I want to be clear with the court that uh, neither the defendant nor the plaintiff have seen these results at this point. We will all be finding out the truth together, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, is your name Bradford Kingston? The answer is yes, the test determined that is truthful. Uh, did you take the missing car a la Range Rover from We Shine Bright Daycare? Mr. Kingston said no. The lie detector determined? He's being truthful, ma'am. I told you. Uh, did you steal the men's designer watch from the daycare? Mr. Kingston says no. Lie detector determines. He's telling the truth, ma'am. I'm looking right at it. Um, so listen, I do think at this point you just, if you are not the devil, you owe this man an apology. I don't, I cannot apologize till I know what the answer is. Wow. Who stole the car? He could have put it in something and got it out of there. Um, and who stole the watch? These items are very Ms. Davis, the court has heard its final word from you. You, okay. you can remain silent the rest of this hearing. Mr. Kingston, I'm going to let you have the final word here because I think you've earned it, and then I'm going to go ahead and make my ruling. Thank you, Your Honor. Never work for people like this. Mm. Make sure you do research, your background, before you step into any type of 
situations like this. I have gone through so much behind this and the lie detector just told you everything. And I'm a little emotional right now because how dare you accuse me of stealing anything? You should be ashamed of yourself. Well, what the court finds deeply troubling, Ms. Davis, is not only your haste in accusing this man of something so egregious, but your willful ignorance and denial of a truth that's being presented to you by an objective and reasonable party today via this court, which tells me that you don't believe it because you don't want to believe it. You've already identified that this man is of poor character. You've already stereotyped this man. And I keep saying that, man, because you have a certain uh, disrespect uh, and, and, and disregard for men in the child care space. And as such, what you need to do with that prejudice, because that's what that is, you have a prejudice against men working in child care. And therefore, as a daycare owner, you should not be inviting men to work for you and then exposing them to the type of discrimination and hostility that is clear that this man has endured. Mr. Kingston, this is what I'm going to do for you. You worked those final two weeks. While I do recognize in standard employment practice, we like to give a two-week notice. Uh, you were responding to severe hostility from your employer, thus your lack of notice is excused. You will be uh, totally awarded your $3,000 that you have asked the court for because you worked those two weeks and you earned it. As for your countersuit, Ms. Davis, it is with great pleasure that I dismiss it entirely <laughs> because you have shown the court zero evidence. And I I know you don't think that little flimsy, thin tape was supposed to sway me in any way. The court rules in favor of the plaintiff's claim for $3,000, and the defendant's counterclaim is dismissed in its entirety to my satisfaction. That's my ruling. All rise. Judge Ebony has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $3,000. I just want answers. You're delusional. Okay. You've had your day in court. Please grab your belongings. Follow me. Will the ladies go first, please? Coming up on Equal Justice. He has some questions about my breasts, so I just unbuttoned one or two buttons just to show him a little bit of what was going on. This is Equal Justice. Melissa Craig claims her jealous neighbor ruined her blouse when she was showing off her mommy makeover. Sasha Griffin says the plaintiff was exposing too much in public, so she wanted to help Miss Craig cover up. Good day, ladies. Uh, Melissa Craig here as my plaintiff, Miss Sasha Griffin as the defendant. Yes. Miss Craig, I see you're suing for $600. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a bit about why we're in court today. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we are in court today because my neighbor here, uh, spilled wine all over my brand new blouse. Mm. So we don't have the best relationship. However, we get along for the sake of our sons who are near and dear friends. Okay, so y'all are like what they call it, mommy friends. <laughs> I guess you could call a it bit. that. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've heard of this. Okay. Yes. So you guys are really friends through your sons. And how old are your, your children? They are nine. Okay. Uh, now, tell me about wine and this shirt. Yes. So, uh, our friend invited us out to dinner at a nice restaurant for her husband's birthday. So, I wore this beautiful, nice shirt. And while I was telling everyone about my new procedure, uh, a little bit of a mommy makeover, if you will, you know, I'm a mother. I've birthed two children. Mm -hmm. uh, things aren't quite where they used to be. So, I got a tummy tuck. Yeah. I got my breast done. And I'm very proud of it. Yeah. I heard that can happen. Good for you. Thank um, you. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm here for a Availing oneself to any and all of the assets, okay? So how does wine get on your shirt? Well, yeah. her husband was particularly interested in this procedure, so I decided to tell him a little bit more about it. He had some questions about my breasts, so I just unbuttoned one or two buttons just to show him a little bit of what was going on. Coming up on Equal Justice. She's caused you to be ostracized. You sure it wasn't when you stood up and unbuttoned your blouse so people's husbands could stare at your breast? This is Equal Justice. Equal Justice is back with a case of Melissa Craig, who blames Sasha Griffin for ruining her luxury blouse. 
She got incredibly angry, throw her knock-off leather jacket at me, and spilled wine all over my well, brand wait a minute, respectfully, maybe it's called vegan. It's vegan leather these days. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I used to think it was pleather too, but my, my mother informed me this is vegan. All right, let's look at this shirt. Um, yes. Go ahead and hand that to my bailiff, ma'am. Thank you. Because you just gave me some facts that I'm still processing. Okay. Okay, so this was the shirt, ivory shirt. Uh, this is clearly red vino. This mm -hmm. is never to be worn again. No dry cleaners is doing anything with this. So this is done. This is a done deal. Mm -hmm. Had you worn the shirt before, ma'am? This was actually my first time having the opportunity to wear it. Okay. Oh, because did you get this for the new boobs? Yes, of course. Okay. Gotta show no. them off. Right. Okay. Are you married? Let me just get to it. Yes, I am. Thank oh, you. so you have a husband. I do. He was there. Okay. Oh, okay. Didn't, I actually didn't see that coming. Okay. So, I don't know if it was just me. Okay. She's saying, let me direct this to you, ma'am. She's saying that your husband inquired specifically about her breast. Is that true? They were talking about it, definitely. Do you think I... that it is bad or immoral for a mother to go have plastic surgery for the sake of vanity? No, not at all. Okay, it's... so you're not judging her? No, not by any means. It's just not... <laughs> Do you feel judged, ma'am? Yes, of course I feel judged. Mm -hmm. And she has caused me to be ostracized by everyone in our friend group. I've lost all my friends. Ma'am, I got it. She's mm -hmm. caused you to be ostracized. You sure it wasn't when you stood up and unbuttoned your blouse so people's husbands could stare at your breast? For the record, this is a very conservative blouse. It was one or two buttons. It was a small peak. It's not like I was flashing an entire restaurant. Judge Ebony's verdict when equal justice returns. This is Equal Justice. Uh, Elijah, I could almost see you through the shirt. Okay, so it's not, right. Ma'am, it's not that conservative nor modest. And then when you tell me you unbutton, okay, ma'am, you do realize at that point you are already down here. And then you're, you know, you have your new ladies there that are yep. protruding. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, Elijah, go ahead and give it a shirt back. Okay, uh, did you throw a glass of wine at her, ma'am? I never threw a glass of wine at her. Okay. Because she was being indecent. I gave her my jacket so she could be decent. Oh, this is where you threw the vegan leather jacket. I, I handed it to her. You tossed it? A little uh, friendly toss? Yeah, just okay. trying to help her out. So you're trying to cover girl. her up. Is that what you're doing exactly. at this point? Exactly. All right. Uh, I think I've heard enough. I'm ruling in favor of the plaintiff because you admitted to the court, ma'am, that you tossed that jacket that then had a causal effect to spill the wine on her and her $600 blouse because you were trying to show decency on her behalf. That's not your capacity, ma'am. You don't have a right, ma'am, to police this woman and what she chooses to do with or without her clothes and her body. The court rules in full favor of the plaintiff to the tune of $600. That's my ruling. All rise. Judge Ebony has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $600. Well, thank you for your money, and I hope you're happy with this, because I still lost all of my friends. God bless. <laughs> This has been a production of Allen Media Group.